Hi class, today we're going to be looking at wave interference and how waves interact with each other. So first, uh, definition for wave interference is just the combination of two or more waves of the same frequency that result in a single wave. So there's two main types, constructive and destructive, and if you think about those words, you should probably be able to think about what the wave does. Constructive is going to build a larger wave, and destructive is going to make a smaller wave. So here's our example of constructive. It occurs when two waves meet and produce a larger wave. The key is that they are crests, as you can see here in this first one. They meet together, and when the crests meet, they make a larger wave. And then here we have two troughs that meet, and they make a deeper wave or larger wave. Destructive is when the crest meets a trough. You can see that here in the picture. So the crest meets a trough and they basically cancel each other out or make a smaller wave. In this case it makes a smaller wave because the trough of one wave was larger than the crest of the other wave. In this one the crest and the trough were exactly the same and so they cancel each other out and the wave is gone at that point. Okay, so you can kind of see here crests add together in the top picture and they make this larger wave. Wave superposition, the waves exactly cancel out. So at that point, you can see since the crest and the trough meet um, and they're the same height type of wave, then they cancel each other out. In this one, the troughs add together and make the larger wave. Wave interference. Uh, interference of light waves produce colorful displays. So an example would be soap bubbles. They show reds, blues, and yellows on the surface because of the way that light interferes with each other kind of like sending light through a prism and seeing the different colors. All right, wave interactions. Waves can interact with each other when traveling through a medium and there's three possible outcomes. Reflection, diffraction, and refraction. Diffraction is when the wave bends around an object, um, so it goes around uh, maybe a corner. So we hear sound waves around a corner because the waves will um, bend around that corner. So this, in this case, the wave is coming straight in, and then as it hits this barrier, it bends around the barrier. Reflection is when the wave bounces back, so it hits a surface and bounces back. You can see that in that little image there. Reflection of light. Um, every object will reflect some light. Rough surfaces reflect light in many directions. So you can uh, put that in, make sure you have that in. And an example of that would be that light would come in, but then on the way out, it's going in all different directions. And this would be like concrete. If you have something that's reflecting off of concrete, it doesn't give you this straight image back. Um, but if you have a smooth surface, that's not a very good image of a smooth surface, you'll have the law of reflection where the light will come in and then it will bounce directly off in an equal angle. Um, <clears throat> with this one, the law of reflection, um, an example could be when it snows and you go out to drive. Normally, if it's concrete, you don't get these um, reflected lights back at you so strongly, but if it's a snowy day and the sun's out, um, it's going to reflect back and you're going to definitely need sunglasses because it's so bright. Here's the law of reflection. When light hits a smooth surface, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And then refraction is the bending of waves when they go from one medium to another. So they're traveling at one speed and then they go through a new medium and travel at a different speed. And so in that point, um, an example could be if you're looking at fish um, from the top of um, the water, the fish will look like they're in one location, but they're actually um, not in that exact spot because the, the light that's traveling from the air to the water changes speed. Uh, another example would be a straw in a glass of water, and you look through the side of the glass, it'll look like the straw is cut. Laws of refraction include um, light traveling in a medium with a higher speed to a medium where it slows down. The ray is bent toward the normal, and the normal is that big blue line uh, in the picture. And when light travels from a medium where it is slower to a medium where it can travel faster, the light will bend away from the normal. So basically images just appear to be in a different position. 
Wave absorption is when energy from the wave is absorbed into the medium. So usually this is as heat, and we can measure this as thermal energy. So um, if you were to put your hand on the desk, um, some of that energy is going to transfer to the desk, and you would, if you had it, um, sometimes you'll actually see your hand print on the desk, especially with these black um, tabletop desks that we have. Uh, and so you can see kind of that heat transfer. But if you had um, a computer image of that and you could actually see the thermal um, release or how much heat is being released, you would see a change in the color of that spot where you had your hand. So it's absorbing that energy. And then thermal energy we've talked about a little bit already, but just kind of wanted to add it in here. Thermal conductors have a high rate of energy transfer, and thermal insulators have a slow rate of energy transfer. So um, the energy transfer will depend on temperature, color, and texture of that object, and then how much exposed surface there is of that object. Um, so that goes along with that um, idea of reflection and absorption and things like that with our light waves as well. Some of it will be turned kind of into thermal energy or heat energy. And then thermal equilibrium is the amount of uh, thermal energy absorbed is equal to the amount of thermal energy that's emitted. So your temperature remains constant if it's at thermal equilibrium. So we're look, saying that it's a, it's a base, um, let's say it, it's the temperature remains 90 degrees of a surface, then that means it's absorbing and emitting the same amount of energy. It's not changing temperature. If it is changing temperature, it's getting colder, then it's releasing more heat. If it's getting warmer, it's absorbing more heat. Okay, and that's the end of our wave and energy section.